do not believe that a structure like this has ever been built before. It's a, what holds this building up in place? It's high quality, over the top engineering. I had a lot of sleepless nights. It was nerve wracking. Hearing the beam, ping, pop, bang, feel the building sway a little. Everything was different on this job. Everything was difficult. Let me know what's going on. There's a lot of for a lot of people in this project, this may be a one-time deal. I mean, it's big, mega, tough, unbelievable. They will not forget this building and being a part of it. We've created a remarkable experience for people in Salt Lake. 111 South Main is actually meant to be a very simple Class A office building. And one of their key pieces of criteria was they needed to build a theater that would seat 2,500 people in order to attract the kind of Broadway-style plays that they were after. One of our pieces of key criteria was to build a, a floor plate that was 20,000 square feet. The city came back to us and said, you know, we've done some initial planning and design and found that we can't get 2,500 seats on the piece of ground that we have. We need another 5,000 feet, which would have reduced our pad down to 15,000 feet. So we were at a little bit of an impasse for a while. 111's rise to becoming a skyline marvel began at this impasse. Both the city and 111's owners needed the same space to meet their goals. Given that 111 could not have any load-bearing columns going through the theater space below, a solution over how to utilize this shared space needed to be found. After being frustrated with whether columns would enter and pass through the UPAC or whether our building would have a seismic joint in their building, which would be very disruptive, we came up with a sketch one Friday afternoon on a go to meeting that showed a cantilevered truss system where we suspended the columns from the roof of the office building. And there, there was just a a huge sigh of relief in the room. We were sitting in a meeting and he actually said, you know, we could hang the building. And we all kind of looked at him like, we could do what? And, and oh, by the way, it sounds expensive. And after that, it's just been I, two and a half years of just go, go, go. Some wonder kind of, why didn't you take the columns all the way down on the north and simply hang the south? When the structural engineers used their software to model it in an earthquake event, that side of the building, the north side, was absolutely too stiff by taking the columns out and creating this balanced teeter-totter effect on the hat truss, it performed much, much better in a seismic event. Now, that opened the door to much uh, more exciting things. The footprint of this building is only about a third of an acre, and so you're, you're really looking at a residential lot at that point. The soil types here in downtown Salt Lake, I mean, it's former Lake Bonneville. We have to make sure that this soil has the capacity to bear up the building and not move in the event of an earthquake. Where that led the design team uh, was H-piles. And what that does is that compresses the soil and develops a friction against the steel. The technology of driving these piles has not advanced very much in the last 150 years, by the way. It took us <laughs> several months of very loud, obnoxious, and I apologize to all the neighbors in downtown, uh, it, it was a very difficult process to get through. The footing on this project was very unique. We had some areas of this footing that were 19 foot thick. We had issues with the curing of the concrete. It, it was getting too warm in the center. They have found on demolitions 50 years down the road that a lot of the, the interior of those mass pores is uh, breaking down. In, in contending with that heat, we have to implement something, again, that's never been done in this market which was to implement a thermal control plant. We brought in a very large water truck, pretty much took up half of our, our site down there. We ended up pumping about 19 million gallons of water through a closed loop system so that there was no question mark associated with this building. The structural integrity of this building is unquestioned in terms of the concrete, and that's what was critical to us. The perfect storm of building this building uh, occurred pretty much from the beginning in pre-construction from when we was asked, you know, can we build a building uh, backwards from the top down to build a building from the bottom up that eventually hangs off from the top. You know, and then they, we get a, a scenario thrown at us, 
Oh, by the way, we got a cantilever over our existing building. There's never been a building built like this before, ever. It scared me a little bit because it made the building very unconventional in, in its construction process. Going forward, we would have to have Oakland build 100% of the concrete core, go to the roof, build the hat truss, and then build the rest of the structure. What that does is it basically stops work. All of the other trades can't complete any of their scope because we're not done. SOM came up with the idea of a saddle cable system of having a temporary saddle where the, sh the building could be be built conventionally. Basically the entire center of the structure, all concrete, able to run cables through there in order to hold up the south side. Bridges could be built this way, uh, but not buildings. A lot of concrete went into this. We were able to use a parity self-climbing system on the formwork. We were able to cycle a floor every five to six days. You had to make sure that each floor or each two floors you put on there and poured the concrete that you kept the building in a balance. If the building become unbalanced at any time, you know, obviously you know the outcome. Every time we would add a deck or a level of curtain wall, we needed to know how the building was responding to that. So we could make adjustments accordingly so things were not getting out of sync. You do have the, the perimeter steel that will stretch an eighth of an inch per floor. Core crush is when, we, as you add on to the weight of the concrete, so the engineers had to come up with a calculated theoretical elevation that included all of the core crush, all of the camber, um, and all of the steel elongation and come out perfect. I'm most proud of actually getting the, the core up on time and on, on schedule. It's hard to believe that all the load does transfer through that core because you, you, know, you think about it, there's a footing, a mass of concrete running vertical in the air, and on top of that there's six articulating bearings, let's call them, that all the structural steel hat truss is, is resting on. When we got up to building the hat truss, the difficulty is, is that every one of them joints, we had assembly anywhere from average of 20,000 pounds to 44,000 pounds. We had 90 days to get this hat truss done. You know, with the amount of welding that we had in the hat truss and how many picks we had, and it was through one of the coldest times of the year. You had big old groove weldings that you had to put together. And one joint would take one man 40 hours to weld one, one beam end. And you got high winds up there. You got uh, snowstorms going on you. You know what? You could be working for days on a weld. But if there's an occlusion that we can find, you're stripping that weld out. As these guys stepped on the job, there was a complete buy-in from them. There was, how are we going to do it? but there was never a hesitancy to achieve that 100% goal. 111 continued to rise above the downtown community, overcoming challenges and exceeding typical standards to achieve the owner's go-all-in approach. The pinnacle moment finally arrived on a cold winter day when the load of the entire building would be transferred from the temporary shoring systems onto the hat truss above. Every weld, anchor, survey, and calculation would be put to the test. For these guys, it was their Super Bowl Sunday. Okay, so we'll start out with uh, SOM and Hassett's okay to go. This is a major milestone. As we met this morning with our safety meeting and uh, orientation, I reminded everybody this is our Super Bowl Sunday. In the event that anything happens that we need to stop, anybody can say stop. There's no hierarchy here. One and seven eighths, zero, half, three quarter, one quarter, What we essentially had to do is lift the building up and attach it to its final attachment point in the hat truss. When it was released, we had to make sure that the right amount of camber would come out of the truss so the floors would end up at the correct elevations. Through the process of steel erection, we had to continue to push up and we were stretching those cables. Several of us have not slept in that two and a half year period, but uh, we're really, really happy to get to this time. And now we're basically doing the opposite. We're unstretching, we're jacking down, we're allowing the building to come down. We're taking the load out of the cables, and so we're basically relaxing all of our temporary systems. 
I remember the first time in San Francisco, he says, this building's gonna drop three inches. Then he went on. After they went on for 15 minutes and there was a break, I says, can we go back to the idea of this building dropping three inches and curtain wall? And one thing we could not have is uh, glass coming off the building. The anchors that we have on this building are three times the tolerances we had to build into them than normal buildings. And today, you know, as they lower this building, the curtain wall is just say, bring it on. All right, everybody, we got to go from uh, SOM and Hassett Engineering. We're going to give it over to SME. It's your show. Thank you. Tell me when you're ready to dance. I'm ready. On three. One, two, three, jack. Every time we moved a building less than one eighth of an inch, that building would talk to you. The building is it's alive, you know. So when we hit that button to you and that thing would just and it just it just give you the growl, uh, a sound that's unbelievable. Down to 600 right now. That's half that load. That truss is just torquing it right now. Yep. Oh, right. Everybody call. Yeah, let me know what's going on. In San Francisco, we have a full-scale model. The computer is telling us what happened. The project engineer, Julian Baza, he's been involved on the phone the whole time and comparing with our mathematical model. Julian's model, you see an A come down an eighth inch after all the other stuff, all the other ones anyway. A line lags behind an eighth. Yeah, okay. And that's what exactly what we're seeing. That's exactly what we're seeing. Julian, he's a bastard. You look at this cable right here. Four inches of cable. I can't even pick that up. That thing is roughly 40 pounds per foot. Oh, your sides move a lot. That's holding up that building. And we stretched that cable four and a half inches. It was great to see the window wall, the curtain wall, stand up and do its thing like it was designed to do. I mean, it's awesome. Level five, which was our baseline, was just perfect zero flat. Seeing all of that happen like we put it on paper was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my career. It was like, boy, hi-fi, bam, you know? It was the greatest feeling ever. In a seismic event, the building itself on the perimeter actually flexes down and upward. So as the building drops down, the rafters actually just pivot and flex with the building. And all you're going to have is a corner that comes together with no physical way that that should be there. All right, Terry, let's go over to show them what they got going on here. Let's come in out of the sun and shade up underneath uh, the 101 South Main Cantilever. Think about where you were on low transfer day. This floor moving up and down, all 25 levels of steel, concrete, glass, all working together, held up by six four inch structural steel cables. That's what it was all about, this cantilever. There's a lot of your heart and soul that went into a project like this. Overnights that you, you're there, sleepless nights to get it done so that the owner gets what they're asking for. 111 Maine pushed and stretched us all, but I think we're all better because of that. Well, what 111 South Maine has shown about Utah is the local contractors that worked on this project could now take on world-class projects at any time. This has pushed me to the limits of where I want to progress every year. Now what we've done is we've allowed architects to design pretty much whatever they want. The cantilevers just got larger and the structures just got a whole lot more unusual. 
111 Maine was kind of the culmination of all these years of, of experience and relationship that we have with each other. So everybody was buying into this thing and everybody did their part above and beyond. As a team, that's contagious. When you drive by and you say, we did that, it becomes a little bit more of, of a life and it brings the city to life and it brings us as people to life. 111 was built by the best, for the best. Rising above the heart of downtown, 111 fulfills the vision of city leaders and the Downtown Rising Initiative to bring long-term health and prosperity to Utah's capital city. 111 has indeed risen as a skyline marvel, showcasing world-class design and the strength of local craftsmanship. 111 is a contribution to the city that reflects Utah pride and will be appreciated by the downtown community for generations to come.